right, folks, this is another edition of Doggo Running's undervalued knives, all right? Well, knives that are basically, in my opinion, a really good bargain. And I have done a video on this knife before, all right? Or actually a sneak preview of it. And this is a company called Heli. And if I pronounce something wrong, I'm sorry, I'm not from Norway, and I can't even pronounce English correctly. So go easy on me. This is the Ning. All right, and they come boxed in, it looks like a little tube kind of thing. These knives range from $60 to about $100, and I'm telling you, if you want a nice sharp knife, and it's not a survival knife, this is a bushcraft knife. What is the difference between a survival knife and a bushcraft knife? Okay, really quick, a survival knife is something that's capable of batoning, being highly abused, etc., 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 a bushcraft knife is something that's deadly sharp, great at carving, and that's something that this is, okay? This is not a knife that you're going to be batoning with or whatever. This would be accompanied with your little hatchet or axe or something of that matter if you were looking for long-term survival in the wilderness. All right, so let's just open up this little box right here. It comes comes apart. you got your little heady deal going on. Uh, when you open it up brand new... All right, and then it tells you a little bit, a uh, little bit of history on the knife. Comes with uh, your little ding a dingers. All right, tells you a little bit of history. Talks about the different philosophy in the knife itself. And then it comes with a. It looks like some kind of rag or something. I don't know. Maybe something to wipe it down with. Uh, yeah, just a little cheap cloth. But that's kind of cool that they put that in there. All right, so let's uh, take a look at this knife. They are. These are made in Norway, and they are handcrafted, and they are absolutely beautiful knives to look at. Are they as good as a custom knife? No, they're not, okay? But for the price and the value, you know, you, it's, it's something that, can, that could, if you're easy on it, last you a lifetime. Uh, but if you're looking for a knife that really performs well, this, these are your knives. Fantastic blades. They used to be a lot cheaper. But they really caught on and uh, really took on a following. And the price did increase slightly on them. Something I'm a really big fan of is the dangling type sheath that they come with. It's just a leather sheath that you put around your belt and it dangles from your belt. See, dangle. So that's why it's called a dangler sheath. Uh, this one's held in place by a little nugget right there. And you just kind of pop it off and the knife comes out. So let's take a look at this knife. Okay. Absolutely beautiful, which this is. As you can see, it has absolutely beautiful wood handles that are completely stabilized and just marbleized. It's really gorgeous. Really nice big handle on this Ning. It is just a fantastic knife. How they, how they make their knives is it's a layered steel. So you have a really hard core material, which is surrounded by a softer material, which is more corrosion resistant. So you really get a nice edge on these things. These things just come absolutely deadly sharp. Um, you can take a look at this, how it's uh, etched right here. Just beautiful. Gorgeous. And then you have your typical grind, which is very popular for bushcraft, which is the Scandi grind. Uh, just beautiful. Now, like I said, these are not custom quality knives, but they're pretty darn close to a very high quality American knife. Um, and uh, they're absolutely beautiful. I, I really do like these. I'm a really big fan. But this is a knife that you do not want to abuse really hard. It does. It's not a full tang knife. You got basically it, it tapers down right about here. And then it's basically like a like a little needle that goes through here. And then they smash it down here, and that's what keeps it attached to the handle. It's got a really nice, nice hefty size handle, which I like. You get a nice purchase on it. And it's really good for the bushcraft style of uh, camping, uh, carving sticks, making feather sticks. Just a real handy blade that can really do a lot of things. Uh, really good for cleaning fish, too. Uh, this particular knife I have found really works well for cleaning fish. 
Um, you have a spine on the back here that's not really sharp. You're not going to be able to really use it for any fire, like a, like a fire rod or any fire sticks or anything like that. Um, so like I said, this isn't a survival knife. This isn't a knife that's a, a, a catch-all, end-all. What it does do is it slices and dices uh, better than a survival knife because it is smaller and it's more handy and it's very, very sharp. It's got that Scandi grind on it. It's very, very maneuverable. I also have a video out there that's a, a Gerber video and uh, showing, you know, when, when a company advertises a knife such as a Gerber survival knife, I expect it to do what survival knives are supposed to do. They're supposed to do basically everything well. All right. Now, this is not a survival knife. What I expect from this knife, which is a bushcraft style knife, I expect this to really slice well, cut well, have a lot of control, and basically be a knife that does exactly that. It cuts. All right. This isn't going to be batoning wood or hacking your way through the jungles of Colombia. All right. This is not the knife for that. So this, these are some knives that you should really take a look at. I don't have any of these for sale, and I probably never will. Um, but uh, like I said, this, the, my videos are not just to promote my own knife uh, sales. It's to give my subscribers some thoughts from myself on what I feel are really good deals out there. And this particular knife is. So this is your Heli Ning. I will put the information below the video. Please visit my Facebook and like it. Uh, on my Facebook, I, I sometimes throw my videos down there. But what I generally do is I'll throw up a picture of a knife and give you a little history on it. Some interesting history. Some history that might blow you away. Uh, kind of like I did on the uh, Camellius electrician knives and how their their materials are connected to the carbon v steel of cold steel it's amazing how knives are all connected and uh so it really gives you some thoughts so please go to my facebook like it so you get some uh some notifications uh thumb up the video uh, and that's about it. I do have my occasional trolls because I'm opinionated and I might remind someone of the guy that freaking picked on him in high school. I'm not that guy, okay? I never picked on anybody. Well, actually I did. And if I did, I'm sorry. I'm a lot nicer now. I was going through some really hard troubles, you know. Come on, you know? Alright, YouTube, um, this is the hell in it. Fricks. Damn it. Hey, so check it out. This is the hell in uh, Ning, Ning, Nine, God dang. This particular knife is made in uh, Japan. What am I talking about? Jesus. All right, one thing I like about the Scandi grind is it's extremely sharp. And uh, why am I holding it like that? I just cut myself. Side of softer material that's more corrosion resistance and uh, just absolute resistance. What? Okay, yeah, we got some carbon fiber around this thing. We can make it into a survival knife. Please don't baton with it. And uh, yeah, I'm freaking retarded today. It's been a long day.